podcast. This is episode three, and like always, I'm joined by the uh, amazingly talented Mark Serge Lafreniere. Serge, I think, is what you want to go by these days. Uh, yeah, that's my middle name. It's my godfather's name, who lives in Capus Casing, Ontario. Ooh, beautiful. And uh, if, you, if you want a nice cold winter, you can go up there. <laughs> um, yeah, that's right, Mark Serge. Uh, all right, so let's get some uh, house cleaning in order. And uh, so we'll basically, uh, we are finally live again in the podcast world. Uh, we had episode two, which uh, launched, and it is now available on iTunes podcast, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify. So we're up there with Joe Rogan, you know, same level, same same level of <laughs> of guests uh but yeah so we're on spotify uh that's where you can find us um we have a podcast we have a, a twitter page sorry uh which is also photogab podcast uh you can search for us there we're on youtube photogab podcast uh on youtube uh where we post uh the episodes there as well so kind of putting ourselves in all the various markets so we uh, if we do capture any listeners from around the world they are there um yeah, so that's where you can find us on Twitter, YouTube. Um, I don't think we're expanding into Instagram just yet because we don't really have any like content to share. I think once we have a guest, I think that's where we'll definitely post like the guests' uh, uh, link to their if they have an Instagram or a website, uh, and maybe share some of their art, their their images there as well. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's where we are right now: is Twitter, YouTube, Spotify. Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, yeah. Um, so yeah, what uh, what have you been up to, Mark? Um, not a whole lot. Um, I've actually not. I haven't taken really many photos. The weather is, like I said, it was. It's been pretty warm, but it hasn't been great for uh, going out and taking photos. Um, not a whole lot. Just uh, you know, the daily grind, working. Uh, traveling back and forth um, been very well actually in the photography in my photography world uh, I'm doing a huge shift in equipment so I've gotten rid of everything except my Fuji X100 uh, so I don't have anything left I got rid of all my bags all my filters memory cards flashes lenses cameras so I have nothing right now, just except, except the the Fuji, uh, which is kind of cool. So we'll see where I can uh, see what see what I'll do with that. That must so feel pretty liberating. Awesome. That must be like liberating in terms of like just like getting rid of like gear that you've had that isn't really being used. Like, would you say it's liberating? Uh, yes, I yes it had it was very liberating because I had a Canon DSLR, I had a Canon uh, film DSLR, or sorry, a film SLR. Um, I had a Hasselblad 500 CM, um, and the Fuji X100. So it was just too many things, too many brands, too many formats. Um, and yeah, the, uh, unfortunately the things weren't being used. Um, I did pick up the Hasselblad during the pandemic and, you know, it's probably a good time to get started with that. And I did do a few things. I shot a few roles during the pandemic. I did a little bit of film development during the pandemic. So those were uh, good learning experiences. Um, but, you know, when life starts rolling back, uh, it's hard to get out there with all of these different cameras. Uh, so I'll see what I can do now for the next few months with just the Fuji. I'm sure it'll be fun. I'll, and it's an easy camera to have with you all the time. It's so light. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of... And I've been obsessively trying to look for a video card. So that's what I've been up to. Yeah, it's uh, I haven't done much uh, either since the last episode, um, photography wise. Um, didn't really take out my camera at all, really the the past week. Um, myself, I've been kind of like limiting myself in terms of social media, so I've just been kind of like restraining myself just to Twitter, um, and Reddit and in YouTube, and just kind of like consuming content in those mediums, um, and mostly. Uh, uh, content that isn't really uh um engaging in terms of like fueling my mind in terms of uh um uh what's the word i'm looking for here like uh, uh 
making me think or making me have a thought process. It's just sort of like mind numbing stuff. Um, you know, uh, I work retail, so going through Black Friday was a bit of a bit of a craziness. So I just kind of wanted to get a, you know, just kind of relax uh, from getting home and stuff like that. Uh, and now, of course, obviously being in the uh, in the in this part of the, the world, uh, the sun goes down around uh, four o'clock. So <laughs> it's not really much time after after four to really take images, uh, especially if you if you're wanting to shoot in in great light as well, like. Uh, in my mind, I do have an idea of like <clears throat> taking images in the in nice sunlight. So, hopefully, this weekend uh, the kids uh, are away, and uh, hopefully, I can get out and get some some images. Um, I'm thinking of taking a little road trip to Brockville to to take some pictures there. But uh, yeah, this week has been pretty pretty quiet. Um, found a a bag of film that I meant to send off to develop over the summer, and I forgot about it. So I think I might send that out next week and get the, the film that I ha sh uh, shot back in the summertime and get that developed. Uh, it has been a while since I have shot a roll of film, but uh, I do have about four or five rolls that are just needing development. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's where I'm at this week, and uh, hopefully next week I'll be uh, in a better situation in terms of uh, photography. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what uh, my week uh, consisted of. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, this is what's nice about this podcast. We're just like two normal guys uh, who have families and work, and um, photography is not our main source of income or no income at all. It's just uh, a love for taking a photo. Um, so I guess I guess I could I guess I could uh, bring the conversation into uh, our main topic today, which I was kind of thinking about a couple weeks ago. Uh, why do we love uh, taking photos? Um, uh, it's it's kind of it could be a very simple answer. Just enjoy it because uh, it's a hobby and it's just fun to get out there. Uh, but maybe it's uh, maybe it can be a little bit deeper. Uh, maybe there's a philosophical um, angle to it uh, because if um, neither of us. Uh, well, I can't speak for Alex right now, but I don't think are making this whole, you know, these buckets of money with our photos. Um, it's it's pretty amazing that we still spend uh, a lot of time and and money and resources um, into just getting out there and uh, taking photos. Um, so maybe before I get into why I think I like it. Uh, why do you like it, Alex? What's uh, what drives you to shoot? Oh man, various things. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me, like when I first started out in photography, the biggest thing that drove me to it was um, was the fame really behind it. So uh, people who uh, got famous from taking pictures, um, like uh, Chase Jarvis and uh steve mccurry and uh you know there's all that fame behind it and then as i progress through my photographic um let's say enlightenment and discovering my passion for it uh there was more to it there was more behind just the fame there was the um discovering that there's a passion there's a love there's an enjoyment i get from sharing my images um you know, I don't sell my work. Uh, I did weddings for a number of years, but that really didn't necessarily bring me much joy. Um, it brought other people joy, which was great. That 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 definitely made me happy to bring them joy. But um, the work itself didn't bring me joy in a sense that, or like in a way that my personal work did. Um, when I shot images for myself, went out taking pictures with friends when we used to be able to do that. Um, then came along Instagram and then there was a community of f photography where um, it grew outside my circle of, of co-workers um, and other friends that took pictures. Um, you know, I could share my images on, on Instagram and, you know, get a couple likes here and a couple likes there in Instagram's infancy. I, I really joined Instagram when it first came out and uh, I most of the photos I posted there was from my phone. And I think that's what the majority of most people's photos posted there was from their phone. 
So uh, the more and more I posted online, the more people I met, you know, the more people that, uh, that inspired me, that I discovered other photographers outside of the people that, uh, that had made books or were famous or were on YouTube and, you know, uh, and then I started to meet those people who were in the community uh, and who enjoyed taking pictures just for the fact of taking pictures. It wasn't, uh, and sharing them with your friends, um, you know, and photography had become accessible to uh, people who didn't make a lot of money. You know, DSLRs were now inexpensive in, in, in 2008 and 2009 uh, compared to you know, digital cameras when they came out literally four years earlier where they were like thousands of dollars. Um, like, I mean, professional cameras were still thousands of dollars, but like you could pick up a Nikon T40 for about, you know, 400 bucks. And the same can be said, you know, now with a, a current camera. So photography at, at that point in time had really opened me up to art uh, and uh, uh, a passion that I had never reali realized that I had. Um, so I take a step back a bit. Uh, in high school, I took yearbook um, as a way to gain credits for graduating. Um, and so when I took yearbook, uh, I was really set on, I was like, yearbook is just to get credits. I want to do auto mechanics. I love auto, I love cars, still love cars. And uh, I want to work on them. So while in yearbook class, they were like, okay, well, we need people to go out and take pictures of of your fellow students, people in the halls, people doing class stuff, people doing art, people doing whatever, uh, you know, extracurricular activities, sports, you know, uh, after school sports and all that stuff. So you need to go take pictures uh, of your fellow students. And, um, and that was really uh, interesting to me where people would, you know, pose or smile or like ask to see the images and then start talking to me. And the camera really was a way to, to talk to people. Um, I was very much an introvert in high school. Still kind of am, but, uh, um, but, uh, yeah, they, they really brought me out of my shell a little bit in high school. And, uh, once I found that I loved taking pictures, um, I kind of just stopped caring about auto mechanics and I really found my passion, uh, in photography. So I literally dropped the wrench and picked up the camera and continued on. And, uh, yeah, photography has been my passion ever since, uh, I get up every day, check Twitter and see who's posted what photos and see if it inspires me. Um, you know, I still have a uh, gas, which is gear acquisition syndrome. So I, I look to see if there's any new gear out there. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's the, what really drives me the, if I had to define one thing, of what drives me to take pictures is to is the community um and i think in the last month or so i've really struggled with that as well uh, it's due to the fact that the change that instagram has made um and i've kind of like disconnected a lot from the community due to instagram's change to their whole platform uh which has really sucked really um but uh, yeah, the community itself is what really brought me into photography and why I love it and what's kept me shooting. I still shoot for sharing with people, uh, whether it be family members, friends, uh, former coworkers, current coworkers. Um, but I think uh, the shift is, is happening for sure. Uh, I'm trying to find a new community within uh, Twitter uh, versus Instagram. Instagram, I find, is kind of now just become a way to for bloggers to promote themselves or to sell content or sell, uh, products. Uh, and there's now like a shopping page on Instagram. So yeah, it's, it's really kind of fallen apart there for me on that end. But, um, yeah, community, I'd have to say is the number one driving factor for me for taking pictures. What about yourself? Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, like just thinking back about, where I started, I'm kind of an oddball because I wasn't really into photography per se uh, for uh, for you know until quite later in my life, I guess uh, maybe like only 12 years ago, which is not that long ago. And uh, yeah, because I was more I was more interested in uh, filmmaking. Uh, 
at the university level when I was when I was in university. Um, so I was more interested in what the filmmakers were creating. Not I wasn't even interested in the, in photographers or cinematographers until much later, um, because I knew that they were the ones in charge of setting up the frame and the lighting. But I still knew that um, the directors had such, or filmmakers had such a huge uh, say in how the image was supposed to look and what they wanted it to look like and uh, what they wanted to portray and how it connected to the story overall. I was more interested in that and uh, went into filmmaking a little bit in Ottawa at the, in at the uh, Independent Filmmakers Co-op of Ottawa. Um, did a, you know, worked on a couple of little films, uh, actually shot on film, either Super 8 or 16 millimeter. Um, never got a chance to work with 35 millimeter motion film, uh, just simply because it's, uh, so darn expensive, especially back then, um, even black and white. So yeah, just had a little experience at 16 and Super 8, which was really fun. Uh, but of course, uh, because of film cost and editing cost of film and transferring the film into a digital format, the cost is pretty uh, significant. So a lot of people went to digital cameras, which, you know, when I was in university, which was around 2003 to 2007, um, digital cameras were very primitive, especially in the video category. Um, so that being said, we still gravi gravitated towards these cameras, uh, like the Canon GL2 and these types of cameras, uh, which were fantastic, but were, you know, you would spend maybe a thousand dollars on a camera, but that's all you would need to spend money on. And then you could just, you know, go out there in a park and with a couple of actors and uh, shoot something. Uh, so it was pretty liberating. And I wish I would have continued that and I wish I would have uh, maybe tr uh, translate it into like a YouTube channel, but you know, I, I just, I missed out on that boat because I was preoccupied with other things, I guess. Um, but yeah, photography came much later, uh, you know, basically when I started working with Alex at Henry's is when photography really uh, came into my life. And yeah, I, th I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, um, I think it's community and being able to take photos uh, going out to take photos with your best friends or your friends or uh, co-workers or, or if you've built some sort of community uh, from a social media platform, um, that's always a huge driving force. Um, unfortunately, now uh, I'm not really part of any f community, so it's pretty much solo, uh, which is, uh, I guess it's a bit more difficult because you have to you push yourself to get out there and take photos uh, and you don't have any anyone else with you. So it's not, it's not as fun, um, especially during these times, like during a pandemic, it's even more isolated. Uh, so it's, uh, I guess that's why I don't go out as much as I used to uh, because there's no community. Really. There, are, there are communities in Newfoundland in regards to photography, uh, but it's ones that I took part in uh, for small parts for, short periods of time and I would go in and out, but it, it was still nothing like the group that we had in Ottawa, which uh, was my favorite. And if I look back at my other activities that are not photography related, um, I don't know, like uh, video gaming, for example, uh, I would play a video game that I particularly didn't really like, but I did it because uh, it was with uh, a bunch of friends and it made the game so much more powerful because we went through it together and uh, we were able to develop friendships and so yeah you know it could it got it got too far in some cases because we would play like 12 hours a day but um it was you know it was that i think that's the main driving force especially with uh, photography as well yeah it's uh it's one of those things where like i agree now now it's definitely harder for sure to to take pictures um with covid and you know uh the the complete shutdown well it's not a complete shutdown of of, of of where i am anyways um but yeah there's a lack of uh 
I found my community online through through Instagram, like I was saying before, and um, there was usually like meetups and people would just meet up and take pictures, do photo walks and that sort of stuff. And that's really where I found my community. But uh, now it's, yeah, it's definitely a lot more solo. And I, I take more of a um, like lone wolf type of aspect uh, to taking pictures. Um, I find that sometimes I can think better um, by myself taking pictures. I get more artsy or more uh, uh, not so much take risks but I can I can you know go places and see things and take my time uh, I find a lot of times with photo walks it's very social and and very which is great it's, it's actually good to, to have so to socialize um, especially now more than ever but um, I found it to to be limiting in terms of like you gotta save the group you gotta keep up gotta go over here, gotta go over there, gotta, you know, uh, you let somebody who walked ahead of you take the photo of something that you, maybe you walked by before and never thought about it from that angle, and then they took the photo from that angle, and you're like, ah, cool, great, great image, um, but, uh, you know, and you support your, 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 your friends that way as well, you know, you're never really jealous, but you're, you're like, darn, wish I had thought of that shot before, but, uh, you know, good on them for, ta for taking it, um, and in some cases, I find, like, when I for street photography in particular uh going out and take photos of people on the streets um i find it's better with a group of people because there's a lot more confidence i get more confidence I, I feel uh from doing so um but yeah i think i think like you know the the act of taking a picture is is definitely intriguing and um the how i feel when i take a picture um doesn't really come into my my thought process but uh, i definitely like the way it makes me feel when i take a picture um i, I don't know i don't i don't i can't really describe the feeling it's kind of hard to, to describe but i feel um energized i feel passionate i feel um connected i guess um uh, not to every image but in some images i feel connected um yeah, it's it's kind of a hard to describe type of feeling. It's uh, it's unique for sure. It's nothing else makes you feel that way when I do that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's definitely uh, an interesting uh, um, topic, and especially now with like COVID and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what my answer. My answer might be different if I was if I was still doing photo walks and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and maybe that's the beauty of it. It's uh, we can't describe it, uh, but it is very unique <clears throat> in how it makes uh, me feel. I guess because I guess within the last ten years uh, from being in Newfoundland, the nice thing about this place is that it's fairly it's fairly remote. Uh, it's sparsely populated. Um, it is a it's a nice place um, if you're coming at it from a landscape perspective. Um, so you can just, you know, get into the car and, uh, and drive somewhere. Um, it doesn't even have to be that far. And it's, you know, most places around here are kind of off the beaten path sort of feeling. Uh, the roads are not, are, are never great. And you find these little coves or these little outport communities, um, which are obviously not remote to the people who are living there, but uh you know it's uh, that's what's nice about it that's what i i've liked to do in the last 10 years uh just to be able to go to a location and i i think i i think the just the act of getting into the car and driving to the destination um is like a huge part of the hobby for me and and the love for taking photos uh i don't know where i'm gonna go really i have an idea of where i'm gonna go but uh, I just stop on the on the way and um, and take pictures of things that I like that I, that I like to see that that I that I've seen along the way that I want to take a picture of. Uh, so it's just very spontaneous. So I think that's probably the uh, the best way to describe it. Just the act of getting to the car, driving to the location, um, and taking pictures of things that you didn't really thought about before getting to the location. Um, and just the act of actually taking the image, uh, you know, it could be something as 
it could be a very uh i guess lack of a better word like boring scene it could be you know just um an interesting looking house uh but the way that it looks and the context around the house maybe the background the colors in the sky the way the light is hitting it um makes it interesting is it part of a story maybe uh you know that's probably what makes photography interesting because if a photo is able to tell a story then obviously that photograph is effective and the photographer has succeeded in telling a story i think that's our main goal um, but if you're just out and about taking snaps of things that are very mundane uh, but still get a really powerful feeling from it it's pretty yeah it's pretty interesting but it's yeah it's, it is very difficult it's very abstract it's very difficult to describe yeah you know it's funny you say that like you know it's not so much it's not so much the where you're going it's what you do along the the way to where you're going so it's very cliche but it's you know the, the journey itself is is the reward versus the destination itself it's not the yeah it's very cliche in that matter but i, I do agree it's like uh, for example this weekend i want to travel you know, to a little place along the st lawrence here in auto in uh, in ontario called uh, brockville and uh i've been there a few times and i've taken photos there and it's a uh, nice place i've never been there by myself um, i've always gone with my partner and our kids um and uh, definitely, for sure, photography has definitely uh, made me go places. Um, and, you know, uh, having a vehicle is very helpful as well. So definitely a vehicle, you know, a camera definitely gets me into a vehicle and gets me to a destination. Um, so, yeah, I, I do agree that it, it's definitely the journey itself Um and not the destination so I, I you know I'm, I'm leaving my mind open I'm not ex, you know I'm not leaving any expectations uh, open to taking pictures when I'm there um, I may get good images I may not but um, I know I'm going to be taking pictures no matter what um, and I think for me that's the that's the biggest thing um, in, in terms of taking photos is not putting so much emphasis on coming back with a good image but just enjoying taking pictures and I think that's what, uh, you know, as I've matured in my photography is that's what it's really boiled down to, which is just to get out and enjoy it. Um, you know, I may not come back with anything that I like or maybe nothing that's like super fantastic, but just to get out and do it, get some exercise, get some fresh air um, and and kind of immerse myself in my in my craft. Um yeah, and I, and I, I, I did 100% positively agree that it's the it's the journey, not the destination. As cliche as it is. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, I'm thinking about a couple of things like, um, you know, this might this might sound a little bit snobby-ish there, but uh, in 2017, uh, I had the I had the opportunity to go to France, and um, we went to Lyon. And if people don't know where that is, that's like sort of like eastern, southernish France, near um, near the border with Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland. Um, but yeah, yeah. Regardless of Lyon, uh, we are one of the main goals of this trip was to go to the north of France, um, uh, north of Paris, uh, in the um, in the region uh, of um, of Arras, uh, that's a you know, it was a fairly large town, uh, but this this area of France uh, has a very historical uh, meaning for Newfoundland, uh, especially during the First World War, uh, where uh, where Beaumont Hamel was located. Um, so yeah, regardless of Lyon and Beaumont Hamel, uh, the journey from Lyon to Beaumont Hamel uh, was you know was interesting. The journey is the most interesting part. Uh, you're just driving, but you're seeing things that you would you would not have seen if you were flying, for example, or maybe if you were taking the train, because the car you have a little bit more freedom um, to go into the country roads and to see uh, some of the towns that are not on the main drag or the main highway. Um, so that yeah, the journey is always so much more interesting. 
and actually uh you know to something that's very newish is if anyone follows uh tom green um he's a comedian lives in la uh, but he's from good old ottawa from vanier um uh in the last uh, few months he's been traveling around the southern u.s with uh like a modded up fan uh, with his new dog charlie and yeah he's going to places where like a lot of americans don't visit and some of these places are like unesco heritage sites um and just just the way that he's filming his episodes for youtube uh are outstanding he's actually using some pretty incredible gear and he's not a bad videographer and photographer and he's putting together these nice little uh, videos he makes his own music out of the van and he puts it together in the video and uh but it's the, the thing that i love about it is the journey of of his uh, trips uh he's getting on the you know on the roads that are not paved uh not a lot of uh, traffic no no one is visiting these sites uh, but just the journey of enjoying like the sunrise and the sunset and uh, just looking at the landscape uh, enjoying the silence and how quiet it is uh that that's exactly what i love doing when i'm taking photos in newfoundland if i drive to a location uh, that's my favorite part of just looking around and uh, seeing all the parts that are uh, uh, all of the of all of the scenes that uh, I wasn't expecting of seeing and that are very interesting and beautiful and uh, and ending up capturing on camera. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? It's funny. I just I knew that he was out there taking pictures, and. Um, and I realized I wasn't following him. Now I'm following Tom Green. Uh, and uh, I just want to, you know, kind of get sidetracked here. But uh, <laughs> he posted a few black and white images a little while back from like early November. And the man shoots film. He shoots, like, I, there's a picture of here in Utah, black and white, Kodak. And, of course, he shoots with a Leica. A Leica, yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. He's got a little bit of uh, FU money. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You know what? But uh, it's he's kind of um, he's kind of doing it in a in a in a unique way in terms of um, you know as a celebrity, uh, you know that he is um, you know a really well known guy, well spoken, you know really is connected to his hometown for sure, and uh, um, to take this journey is definitely a unique experience. You know, it must have been something inside of him that was calling for him to you know, kind of like pack up his life essentially, um, put it in a van and just like travel the back roads. Um, and to see, you know, the U S and in, in different, uh, uh, times of day, different seasons. Um, you know, so yeah, I think it's a, a unique thing to see how a journey can, where a journey can take you and only, uh, fulfill something inside of you for sure. Um, yeah, like I mean, uh, you know, we, we we've been talking about uh, the you know this wasn't our main topic, but it seems like the journey has become our topic now, and uh, we're not really now, but um, you know, I definitely learned something this past year, or last year I should say, when you and I took a, a road trip in Newfoundland, and it was really like, you know, my destination was St. John's, but the journey itself was you know, you and I going from St. John's to Kirpon and, uh, and back. And the, the journey itself was, was really, uh, fun, eye opening. Uh, I saw, uh, a mountain, you know, taller than the CN Tower, which is crazy because I've seen the CN Tower. I've stood underneath it. So to see a mountain that's like higher than it, it was absolutely insane. Uh, to meet, you know, somebody who is from uh, uh, a community who is, you know, uh, I forget the gentleman's name, but he talked about how, uh, like, government basically is kind of, like, left, uh, I, think, I believe it was Trout River. Uh, rem I don't know if you can, do you remember the conversation we had with that man? Uh, he had, that, like, his wife had a little wear shop there. 
I don't know if you can remember. It, yeah, was it Trout I, River? He, I think you're right. I think it was in Trout River. I don't remember exactly what the guy was talking about, but it yeah. was it had something to do with, I think, the federal government. Yeah, I think yeah. basically it was the federal government, the fact that they had like closed down the like, nearest hospital I- nearby, and they had to, you know, the... Oh, I guess that could have been the provincial then. Yeah, provincial, where like they basically the hospital like closed down, so then I had to take a hospital that's twice as far, um, and they've kind of like the you know Trout River's kind of been in this community that's kind of been like left behind almost, and uh, you know it's one of those things where when I went on the trip, I was very like I don't want to say I was selfish, but I you know I was there to to see you and take the trip with you, but I was selfish in the sense that I didn't really get to talk to a lot of people from these communities, and I guess that comes back to my introvert. Uh, this uh, of myself and uh, um, you know so so definitely it's kind of like uh, the trip itself kind of opened my eyes to maybe having more conversations with more people on on journeys um, but uh, yeah like I'm pretty sure Tom Green is is having conversations with people all over the place obviously he's a recognized well I guess it depends on where he goes but he is a recognizable person for sure, uh, especially as soon as he opens his mouth, that 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 voice and that accent is just so so no so spot on. It's not even funny. Um, but yeah, um, the whole journey uh, last year was just fantastic. I enjoyed the whole thing, and uh, I really wish I had talked to more people because um, I think it would have made more um, made the trip that much better. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what uh, where to go from here in terms of journeys. Um, well, um, uh, I guess if we yeah if we talk more about journeys, uh, yeah, I guess the main thing about me is uh, in the last few. To- I guess in the la- let's say in the last ten years, all the trips that I've taken in the last ten years, they've been very uh, rushed and they've been rushed but yeah to a degree but what you want to do is because is let's say you get the opportunity to visit uh, uh a place in europe uh, you know uh you know it's ex- it's not it's not cheap to go to europe it's expensive and uh you need to you need to have the luxury of having time off and uh, not a lot of people have these uh, these opportunities but the the times that i've had the opportunity to visit europe uh it's always been um not a rush but like trying to see as much as possible uh within a very limited time frame Uh, i mean the last two europe trips uh i can't say that we had a limited amount of time because we would have we had like three to four weeks which you know was a substantial amount of time uh, compared to the last trips to europe that i took Um, but when you when you frame everything okay i have three weeks to to do all of this in france Uh, so you want to do uh, this city and this town, and you want to do these particular, maybe these tourist attractions, or et cetera, et cetera. You think you can do a lot, but uh, you really can't at the end of the day. And you you don't learn. I I don't know. We haven't learned our lesson because the year later we went to Germany, and we had a we had an extra week, so we have four weeks. So with we Germany, Austria, and Czech Republic, and with. Um, so you spend a few days in berlin and then you spend one day in this little town oh but you really really love the little town but you have to go to the next town because you've booked your accommodations and you you have two nights at this town and you don't really like it you want to go back to the last one so it's because it has to be planned it's so constrained and you feel rushed and you feel like you're not taking it in um i guess it's a little bit different with our trip in or around newfoundland last summer where we had uh, nearly two full weeks, but again, uh, Newfoundland is humongous, and we wanted to, you know, we wanted to reach uh, the end of the west coast and the end of the north coast, and uh, and most of your time is spent in the car, which is great. It's fun because you're seeing a lot of things, but when you get to your destination, you're taking photos, and then you forget to talk to the people. And what other better place to talk to people than here? It's the easiest. Mm-hmm. As long as you can understand them. Yeah, especially in the smaller towns, you might. Uh, yeah, you might. A little, uh, little bit harder. You might end up uh, encountering uh, thicker accents. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh yeah like um yeah i remember my the t i had 10 days uh, in 2012 when i went to uh italy um and i went there my sole purpose of going there was actually to photograph a family friend's wedding um that's what they had asked me to do they invited my parents my sister uh to go on the trip and um yeah, I, 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 I took a lot of photos. I wish I had taken more photos. I, I don't know. I guess I was expect. I also just, we'll just put this as a side note, but we went there in August. And if anyone knows what Italy is like in August, it's like scorching hot. It's like Ottawa. So Ottawa, where, where I'm from and where Mark's from, it's like humidity central. It's like, you know, it'll be like 25, but it'll feel like 40 with the humidity. And it's like that in Italy in the middle of August. So it was blistering hot. So if you got if you were out in like at like twelve o'clock or one o'clock in the afternoon, one everything is shut down because that's how the culture is there. Two, uh, there's no shade. The, 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 all the buildings are really short and really small. There's like little alleys and stuff where you can get away from the sun, but it's hot. It is very hot, and everything is stone and. So, you know, granite and everything reflects the sun so it's just very hot i think at the time 2012 i was only four years into my photographic journey per se and i was very uh very impatient you know i wanted to go here i want to go there i want to get this i want to get that i kind of over stimulated my mind prior to going with these images of of grandeur of these you know taking these amazing images and i sold myself on on, on getting images that were going to be amazing and i think i set myself up for failure at that point i did take some some decent images but uh, i think i probably would have taken better pictures if i had a, a clearer mind and didn't overwhelm myself um definitely that's what i tell myself now if i went back in time and told myself in 2012 because now i don't really set myself up for that way i just say i'm gonna go take pictures and see what happens um but yeah you do feel rushed you do feel uh overwhelmed when you're in a place that's new and you've never been there before and you're kind of on a schedule and yeah it's, it's definitely uh frustrating for sure um but what i will say is going back to what our actual original topic is is how i felt during taking pictures um it felt good to be in another country taking pictures i felt um i felt like a tourist which is fine i didn't really want to blend in not like i do now but um yeah, at the time I had this really obnoxious low pro backpack. It was like vibrant orange. You could pick me out of a crowd. Like it was, the, it was like he's such an easy target. I'd be like, yeah, there he goes. Was um, it a slingshot? No, it wasn't a slingshot. Bag. It was like a uh, like a sport trekker backpack. It was like a really it, it, it's great. For, it was really great for like a trail hike, but not for urban picture taking. I stuck out like a sore thumb. I um, got rid of my Think Tank Streetwalker, and I'm so happy it's gone. What a, what a name for that backpack. Jeez. Yeah, it's not a, yeah, it's not a street walker. It's like a hiker, hike yeah. walker. It's a hike walker, yeah, You exactly. could put a tent in it. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it's funny. Gear is such a, it's such a funny thing when it comes to, like, photography. Um, I, I recently just picked up another photo backpack. I kind of did the opposite of what you did. Um, but I picked up a, another photo backpack because... Uh, I liked the one that I had, but I found it too soft. It wasn't rigid, and it didn't hold things properly the way I wanted it to. And um, the one that I have now fits my laptop, microphone, uh, all my accessories for my laptop, and then my camera plus a lens. Alex so, is a drama queen of camera bags. Yeah, I know, I know. My cam my life with camera bags is the worst. Uh, it's so it's so bad. I I've you should I've have started owned... a you should have started like a YouTube review for camera bags. Totally should have, because I've probably owned just about every camera bag that's ever been made from every brand. I've owned anything from uh, Low Pro, Tenba, Think Tank, uh, Peak Design. Uh, the current bag I'm rocking right now that I like is uh, by Thule, which is the uh, Swedish like uh, storage company, which makes like uh, those roof racks for like uh, camping equipment or like. Uh, camping or uh, hiking or bikes and stuff with an msrp of nine 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 yeah exactly <laughs> um 
I even picked up uh, earlier this year uh, a bag called uh, it's a new camera bag company called Brevit Brevite Brevit. Oh yeah, uh, I follow their Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, they've got some. It was a really interesting bag. I never seen anything like it before in terms of the way it looked and stuff like that. And the reason why I replaced it is because uh, when you have kids, they tend to put things into your backpack or you put things into your backpack that you end up forgetting about. And I guess one day, I guess I had my hands full, so I grabbed, uh, I had gotten the kids like McDonald's for like lunch or dinner or whatever, and they come with like chocolate milk in these like bottles, and I had put those <laughs> into the backpack, and it was like four <laughs> days later that I had like, went into my backpack and grabbed my laptop, and I was like, oh, it's kind of like wet. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. So then I open the main compartment, and there are these two like, chocolate milk bottles that are like swelling uh, I'm like oh my gosh these things are going to burst within my backpack and one of them had already had done that it had like already like leaked inside my camera was not in the bag um, and the bag was just damp with like chocolate milk so it would uh, it like just like damped my the outside of my laptop which thank gosh because I had like just bought this new MacBook this year um and uh yeah so that was a very scary uh situation to come across um but the bag because it's a fabric it's it absorbed the smell of rotten chocolate milk oh my god <laughs> so i so i was like you know what i'm just gonna buy a new bag and just forget about it i'm gonna try and clean it at some point it's up in the closet so but, uh, uh, uh well this will be a good opportunity to ask you yeah uh, with uh an x100 in hand and maybe possibly uh, a friggin Nikon Z whatever it's called uh, what camera bag would you uh, suggest now to be honest like I think one of the ones that I shoot with the most um, if I'm just carrying a camera and I'm not carrying my laptop um, I have the Peak Design uh, sling bag um, it holds my Fuji X-Pro3 it holds a film point and shoot um, batteries uh I have a portable uh, like battery charger for my phone, but it also charges my camera. Um, holds a memory card wallet, um, and that's pretty much it. That's all it carries. Um, and I like that because it's very minimal. It's non-discreet, um, so, uh, and it's not heavy. It weighs maybe a pound, maybe half a pound. I'm not sure the exact. We can go to Peak Design's website, but it's the Peak Design Sling three liter, I believe. Um, I thought about upgrading to the six liter, but uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think it holds just the right amount of gear. Because the problem is, is that um, my previous, um, let's say my previous like backpacks have always been like bigger backpacks. So I end up trying to pack as much as I can into those bags. So I end up trying to bring everything, which usually results in poor photos or I don't take my camera out at all. Um, so yeah the peak design uh three liter but i think if you're gonna have the nikon z and the fuji i'd probably say the the peak design six liter probably would be sufficient i think it would be big enough to to hold exactly that uh um it's a sling it's nice it comes in this really nice blue color um you can have a go look at it on, on Peak Design's website. This is we're not sponsored by Peak Design. I'm just I just like I just like <laughs> maybe Peak Design. maybe we will. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe someday we'll have a, a sponsorship. But uh, and Peak if Design anyone, bags. If anyone yeah. if if anyone is listening, uh, wherever sold cameras at a camera store, I could not stand selling a camera bag. I would just tell them, oh, get the low pro slingshot. And then when they were all out of stock, I would just tell them, go to the wall, tell me if you like anything. I fucking hated it. The problem, with, the problem with bags, though, like especially with selling them, it's like it's such a personal thing. Like, and to find the right one, like I've definitely found the style that I like, um, for sure of of bags. Like, um, the Brevity bag is very like a very hipster bag. It's a very like like millennial type design bag. It looks like a Jansport bag, but with a camera compartment. But I just don't like the way the camera compartment set up. Uh, I think it's too, has too much easy access to the outside. So somebody who's, uh, you know, let's say you're traveling, somebody could easily get into the bag easily um, and take your equipment. Um, so for me, it's uh, it's not a great way to store your camera gear. So I didn't like it for that aspect. I also found it too soft. 
So like, you know, if you got onto a bus and like, or into a car and you threw the bag, your camera equipment's not protected very much, so it's very flimsy. Um, I found with my Thule bag, it's it's well protected. It's got some hard spots uh, where it's well protected. It's well padded. There's a, a removable camera compartment area, so you can actually take it out and then have the bag as a regular backpack. Um, so I do like that. Um, the sling bag that I have is also very nice in terms of being very small. It's very rigid. Peak Designs bags are made with really good materials. Um, so it's very rigid. It's water resistant. Um, they uh, don't look like camera bags either. Um, so I do like that aspect of it. Um, and you can swing it around to the front of you as well, which is really handy. Um, if you don't want to be, uh, if you're out in some European country that's got, uh, that's got, um, is known for like uh, pickpockets or whatever. But uh, yeah, um, Pick, Peak Design six liter sling bag, I think would probably be a good option. I don't know if it would hold both your cameras, but um, it's a nice bag. Uh, it's got a nice blue color. I like the the blue color is really what, uh, what uh, intrigues me about it. Um, yeah, yeah, like a, I think a, uh, something that we don't talk about much is uh, like we've been talking about journey. Yeah. Go from point A to point B. You want it to be comfortable. I have never been comfortable with my equipment. I've mm. always had a heavy, sluggish tripod. I've always had this massive, uh, you can put two tents type of camera bags. <laughs> uh, and I would bring this this think tank to Europe. It was like, a, like, and the thing is, it's so large. You would put everything that you owned in the bag, like even down to your like little battery compartments. And you would get there and you wouldn't find anything. Um yeah, so I've always been very disorganized. Or I've been organized in how I put everything in my bag, but it, you would put so many things in it that it become it becomes like uncomfortable, and uh, you're bringing it on the plane and it weighs like thirty pounds, and it's just mm -hmm. like it's just a nightmare. So and... I I prefer not having a bag at all, but obviously you need one to a degree. But um, yeah, I'm trying to look for something that's uh, you know s sleek and. It looks. I'm a bit of a sloucher, so a big bag looks like a, a terrible on me. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm just not. Uh, yeah, I would, can never be a camera model. That's for sure. But a camera bag model. Uh, yeah, no, I can't find one that uh, suits my needs. Um, yeah, it's kind of uh, backpacks are kind of those weird things where camera bags in particular. It's it's really really they're very particular um for the user um you know like you know i'm still not like a hundred percent satisfied with my bags but I, I i swear if i buy another camera bag i think my partner would just you know divorce me or or, or break up with me however way you want to put it um, well next time you upgrade but, to a new bag let me know i'll buy your previous one yeah that's true i should do that um the brevity bag so wouldn't be a bad option but like I, again i think that's one of those things where i don't find it that um, secure. I don't find the padding to be that much. Um, I did have a Peak Design Everyday Backpack, but I found that the Everyday Backpack was very... It's just what it was. It was an Everyday Backpack. It wasn't like photo uh, oriented, which kind of made it awkward. So it was definitely like set up to be a photo bag, but I think it wasn't just strictly a photo bag. And I think that's what made me not like it, is that um, it could do everything else. It was like a jack of all trades, but um, it wasn't really a master of anything. Um, and I found the bag to be too rigid. It wouldn't, it was like, like you obviously want a perfect balance between a rigid bag and a soft bag. And this was like too rigid. I found, um, maybe I'm just very picky. That's just me. Um, but, uh, well, the Pandora's box has opened. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've really, you know, gotten to the, uh, the aspect of, of stuff that I, you know, have a pet peeve for, which is bags, uh, in terms of different bags that are out there. Uh, I'm not a fan of, of uh, sling bags like the low pro uh, what was it called the sling what was it the low pro uh sling was it the 100 i think henry's even like had a 100th anniversary edition of it slingshot 102 slingshot yeah 102 oh yeah that's right the 102 actually no the original was called the slingshot 100 100 oh, all right. weather yeah this thing yeah. this thing was god awful it looked ugly but you oh. can sling it in front of you and grab your camera yeah, you totally but you look like a nerd 
but you oh, could man. but you could use a... it you could use it as a little uh, support. Yeah, you could. I think that was like one of the things that like um you know, it was definitely a selling feature of the bag, but it's ugly. <laughs> it's That's like good. black and gray. Do we have any listener to yeah, to any listener out there like the things that we had to do to sell camera bags. We would wear and we would wear them, we would model them. Demonstrate them. Oh my gosh, them? I totally forgot about that. Jeez, yeah. How do we put the cameras in them? Uh yeah, it's uh, that was uh, that was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, man. And then people would be like, then they would they would like, Oh yeah, this is a great bag and then they'd see like fifty nine ninety nine or sixty nine ninety nine and like scoff at the price and you're like, Come on I'm like you're buying an eight hundred dollar camera. Put put like sixty bucks, you know, on the table to put your camera into it. Like you know, people would be like and that was like the early stages, people were like, Well, I'm gonna see what Walmart has or you know, Amazon wasn't really a big thing at that point just yet, but uh yeah, people were just uh it was, it was definitely an interesting thing for, for us as as camera sales people try and sell people a camera bag yeah that's oh, the man. yeah that's the beauty of selling cameras you know selling all the accessories but it like it in um in a social media from a social media perspective at least in the last five years there's been such a focus on like sleek and uh everything needs to match and everything needs to be clean and perfect and I mean, if you, if any, any of you guys are listening, know a real photographer, like someone who, let, let's say, like a photojournalist who travels, and you know, their yeah, their stuff is not organized. Uh, it does not look like it does in an Instagram story. No. Uh, it's it's used. There's tape on it. There's banana peels in the camera bag. There's stains, there's dirt, uh, you know. There's a couple of people I can think of in in Newfoundland that did photojournalism, and there's chunks it, missing out of the camera. Yeah, like it's just, and you know, the, it's a tool, and you need to, you use it, and uh, it will it, it will um, uh, suffer a lot of mileage. You know, it's uh, mm-hmm. so we keep all our gear nice and clean and or you know we're scared that it's going to go into the elements a little bit and we shouldn't be like that's a, it's a tool and yeah. uh, especially today they're like you know they're very uh, they're weather sealed and they're they're they could take a huge hit um even like a little x100 uh, is completely sealed so it's like yeah uh so what you see on instagram is not the full story no and and you know that's uh you know just go watch the uh, documentary um of a social dilemma and that really gives you an insight of like you know the the fake reality of of uh or the fakeness of social media and some, some posts and stuff like that but that's a uh, that's a whole other topic for another time um well yeah and with the journey yeah. with the with the as- we could maybe end it on this note with the aspect of a journey um, even the journey is not perfect and nope. the journey is not always uh, pleasant and the journey is not uh, you're always going to encounter obstacles and uh, things will break down and uh, yeah, I've got a story about that your final destination uh, you know you wanted to go uh, to this beautiful mountain uh, you might not be able to get up there uh, the weather changes and then you can't mm-hmm. take the beautiful photos that you wanted mm-hmm. uh, so again it's too bad that no one shows that reality yeah um, well last year um, you know I had the unfortunate uh, adventure uh, early early last year where i was uh, out taking photos during a snowstorm and uh, i should have known better but uh, i thought it'd be a great opportunity to take pictures out in the snow and uh, i had done it before you know geared up put on my winter jacket wore multiple layers put on my snow boots put on my winter pants like i had snow pants on um took my camera out it was nighttime there was nobody out in the streets it was snowing like crazy the wind was blowing in about maybe 60 70 kilometers an hour and uh i was like hey this is a great opportunity nobody's out here there's great light there's uh, snow flying everywhere and uh i don't know it was maybe about maybe 20 minutes from my house 
uh, if that. No, I was like five minutes from my house, but I was out, had been out for 20 minutes. And uh, I was exiting uh, a park that was literally across the street from my house. And I stepped on some icy snow. I slipped uh, and with the force of gravity fell on my butt. But unfortunately, the camera was still attached to the tripod. And uh, it was carried underneath my arm. And my hands went down to brace my, my fall. And the camera ended up on the end of the tripod smacking off the ground and uh, shattering the body. Uh, resulting in a $600 repair. Um, and uh, it was really unfortunate because uh, there was there was an opportunity before we had, Mark and I had decided on Newfoundland, we had uh, had originally had planned on taking a road trip around uh, Iceland. Um, and uh, that was unfortunately one of the issues that kind of resulted in uh, money being an issue uh, for the trip uh, was the fact that I had to spend money on repairing my camera um, and ultimately not having a camera to go on the trip with if, if that was the case um, and uh, you know that uh, that really kind of shook our travel plans and kind of shook our journey a bit and unfortunately that's the reality of things um, you know uh, it, it sucked to have spent six hundred dollars on repairing my camera on a, on a I, if I had stayed in who knows we might have went to to, to Iceland um, but uh, yeah it's one of those things that just uh, ultimately happens you gotta you gotta be careful think about your 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 trip uh, even though I had a trip and you know uh, it uh, yeah so you gotta just be careful uh, enjoy the journey, you know, ultimately, you know, enjoy your journey, uh, whether it be a photographic journey, whether it be a journey to a destination. Um, but I think, I think the biggest thing that I can leave people with, you know, at the end of this, uh, end of today's podcast is that when you go out and take a picture, don't think about it, just go out and have fun. Um, ultimately, you know, it's, it's, taking the photo that's going to bring you the joy it's not going to be you know how many likes it gets you know that's only going to last for maybe 24 hours and then it's going to not get any more likes or very few and you're going to feel uh unfulfilled you're going to feel depressed you're going to feel a wide range of emotions that are not going to be great um I know at one point in time, that's how I felt. I felt like, hey, I'm on top of the world. You know, got like 30 likes. And then that was it. And I get like one like on that on that photo like a month later. And that'd be it. And it's like, you get this high and then you're down. You're down for the rest of the day or the rest of the week or the rest of the month. And you just have no, no, uh, you have no go. You have, you're just depressed about it. So. What I'm trying to say is get out, enjoy taking the photo, don't think about it too much, do it for yourself, uh, enjoy the journey. Uh, yeah, definitely. I agree with all that. Don't let social media uh, dictate how you take photos, how you should be taking photos. Uh, basically, just go out there for yourself and uh, pick a destination uh, enjoy the journey, even though you might run into some obstacles and some difficulties and some hardships and some challenges and some and uh, all these different feelings uh, of during the journey, during you taking the photo and afterwards. Um, but I think uh, just going through the act of creating an image uh, should be your ultimate goal and um, go through it with um with no expectation because you don't know what's going to happen on the other end yeah uh, you know it's uh, definitely uh, i uh i second all of that um it uh yeah so like you know just have fun it's uh photography is a fun thing um, even if it's a, a business that brings you money, it's have fun. Like 
it's uh, you know some of you already probably do already have fun that's probably how you do most of your business um, but uh, yeah it's uh, photography is supposed to be one of those fun things and you know what doesn't uh, and uh, I don't I stress this I don't stress this enough and I kind of need to you know uh, take what I put out there but um, you don't need a expensive camera either <laughs> like you, you, you people take great photos on their phones all the time the phones have really like kind of like taken over as the uh, documentative uh, object uh, and or a documentative tool is the is the proper way I would put that um, you know in terms of uh, being a cultural thing in terms of people using it to take pictures of uh, the Black Lives Movement uh, uh, protests for uh, the Me Too movement uh, for um, Trump supporters for Biden supporters for people who are in the middle um, the phone has definitely been a way to uh, express yourself express your your platform um, so it doesn't matter if you have a big expensive DSLR or, or a film camera or a phone take photos and uh, be happy about it um, and have fun yeah enjoy the journey uh, I think I've said that more than once now. <laughs> uh, yeah, just enjoy, yeah, just get out there and enjoy it. And there's so many people that's, that that uh, uh, maybe they're just starting out and they don't know how to do it or what to do. And the most important thing is just grab whatever camera you own and um, you know just go out there with a friend for an hour and see what you can get. That's the most important uh, lesson. Yeah. No. Exactly. Like and. Uh, maybe mark maybe you can answer this but um for yourself i know this is like kind of in our in our discussed topics before we started but um where do you find uh the value in taking photos for yourself like where is the value um uh yeah i guess i can I guess I could uh, go back to what, when we talked about um, just the, not the act of like just taking the image, but the whole process that's uh, involved. Um, so acquiring some of the equipment that you need, jumping into whatever mode of transportation that you have access. It could just be walking, uh, going to a park, for example. Um, and yeah, I don't particularly value, I don't, uh, well, for myself, yeah, I've made a little bit of money with photography in regards to uh, weddings, um, but other than that, uh, there's no, there's no monetary value to my photos, um, so it's just <clears throat> basically the act of, of, of going to a destination or uh, having the opportunity to go out there and uh, take pictures with uh, with a friend or two is probably probably the the reason that I do it. Um, and obviously, when you see an image on your, on your camera that you're really happy with, uh, there is no better feeling. Yeah, agreed. I, I think that uh, that's that's where the value. Of of, of photography is held for me as well I think it's uh, I think one of the, the biggest you know uh, things that I get out of it, enjoyments I get is is uh, coming home with some images and handing my camera to uh, my partner and uh, having her just like flip through them and seeing her like say ooh I really like this one this one's really great and I think for me I always kind of like shrug it off I'm like ah you know it's an alright image it's okay and then but deep down inside, I'm like, oh, cool. She likes that one. I like that one too. You know, and it's just, I'm very, I like to try and be humble about it. But uh, inside, I'm, I'm giddy when she, uh, when she likes the image that I take. Um, you know, she has a bit of a bias, but uh, I don't care. <laughs> um, no, yeah. So your partner, family, friends, whoever, it's important to show your work. Um, uh, don't hide it. Don't uh, not show it. Don't publish I need, it. Don't I need to not print publish more. it. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, what yeah, I need to do. Yeah, don't not uh, print. Like just share them whatever way you use. Uh, if it's Instagram or printing a photo book or whatever you want to do, 
uh, it's important to uh, even though it only gets maybe two likes uh, yeah. it's important that it's out there and yeah. uh, the little bit of feedback that you do get uh, will, will be great and uh, maybe you might sell a print and you know things start unraveling and you know it's it's, it's amazing what what can happen if you just continue um, continue doing it I think the most important thing is consistency which I I don't have at all uh, same uh, which I guess is a problem for any artist of any in any medium uh, but we all go through these huge waves of of uh, not doing anything or not being inspired or whatever but uh, keep doing it and something and even if you don't become this huge social media star it doesn't matter uh, it's at the end of the day I think it's just for yourself yeah even though yeah, it's, it's, that sounds all like like uh, very selfish it's it, it is it is selfish uh, yeah it, sometimes it totally... we don't we shouldn't attribute selfishness to in a negative way sometimes that's what you need it's you know it's your way of expressing yourself exactly and um yeah i could i could i couldn't agree more it's definitely a way of like expressing yourself for sure and uh and to be honest like if even if you're not shooting for for anyone in terms of like a job or anything like that shoot for yourself and that's what's you know most important is what uh is what makes you happy about taking pictures uh, who cares what anyone else says? Fuck them. It's all about you. Um, if it makes you happy, that's all that matters. Um, and if it, if it does bring joy to somebody, awesome, cool, you know. But uh, the day, it's it's like you like you said, it's it's about yourself. Um, uh, yeah, I couldn't uh, couldn't agree more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I think that's a good. That's a that's a good way to end this one i know that's i know we kind of had a specific topic in mind but i yeah. like how it just naturally flowed you know, into flowed the journeys into a, yeah into a different direction that's what it's all about yeah yeah exactly all right well if that wraps it up then uh, that wraps it up for this week's uh, episode three the uh, photogab podcast um you can find the podcast on itunes uh, or sorry, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and it will be uploaded to YouTube as well underneath the same title, Photogab Podcast, um, where you can subscribe, hit that like button, smash that like button, however they say it on the YouTube. On on the YouTube. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I sound like a an old person. That was a uh, that was a Peter McKinnon there. Smash wow. it, smash it, smash good. that like button. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you could find myself at uh, at um, uh, Alex Boone Photo on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, I think on Instagram, I can't remember. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I think it's Alex Boone Photo. I, I don't have an Instagram on my phone right now, just because I'm trying to distance myself from it. Uh, but yeah, you find me on Twitter for sure for at at, uh, at uh, Alex Boone Photo, uh, and my website is aboonphoto.com. Yeah, where can we find you, Mark? Uh, yes, same, uh, just uh, Mark with a C, Serge, S-E-R-G-E-N-L, uh, at pretty much any social media platform. Uh, I'm most active on Twitter, I'd say, and uh, maybe Instagram would be a close, sec a close, uh, uh, a close second. I uh, don't currently have a website, uh, but I actually hope to make a PhotoGab podcast website uh, where all of our links will be found. Yeah, that would be awesome where people can uh, just go to one spot and have a link to everything. And uh, unlike Joe Rogan, we're not exclusively on Spotify. You can find us in those other locations, as mentioned before. Um, yeah, so uh, we look forward to another episode, hopefully next week. Uh, I know that the holiday season is coming up, and we both are going to be maybe somewhat busy. But with COVID, it's kind of like one of those things where like, we're kind of not seeing our families this year. So it's kind of an interesting time but yeah anyways yeah I keep, I'll, uh... keep rambling on it's it's uh we'll we'll definitely try and make this a, a weekly thing for sure um we're gonna definitely do our best let's put it that yeah way. We're, well, not gonna, uh... we're not gonna hold ourselves accountable but we're definitely gonna do our best no exactly and with my traveling back and forth uh i didn't i don't have my tech at home but it will be at home during christmas holidays so uh we should uh we should uh fire up a podcast awesome yeah. perfect well thank you so much thank you and 
All right, and we'll uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Yeah, ciao.